Hello friends, how are you today? Well, I'm here today to chat with you about energy and to talk about the energy of the Schumann Resonance and give you an explainer about what is going on. <laughs> you might have seen last week on the chart, there was a data break and then there were two figures at the top of the chart. It looked to me like two people walking next to each other. It was so interesting because that was the same day that a certain astrological formation happened and it involved the asteroid Anteros. And it's so interesting how the Schumann energies, in my view, and the astrology energies can match because when I saw the picture of the data loss, to the left of it, there was an image to me of a head that was like an Egyptian head, like, you know, with the headdress, with the lines. And that figure was pretty large and it was looking towards the past almost longingly. And so it's like there was a pull towards the past and it was coming from that space of no data. Well, the next day there were two figures in the chart and these two figures to me were like they represented two individuals walking or interacting or moving together. And when I saw that, my question was, um, how are these people relating? And it's interesting because they were doubled, just smaller, slightly before the two white waves of images. And again, after. Then on Friday, there was a big wave of energy. And since then... There was a lot of red, especially early this week, in the chart at around 8 hertz, which is our, which um, correlates with our observational brain waves. And when I saw all the red uh, <laughs> in the lower hertz in the chart on Monday, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is, I wonder what this is, what's going on here. Now, we have an eclipse coming up on Friday. I'm recording this Wednesday night. And this eclipse is going to be very interesting energy. I'm going to talk about this energy on Thursday night during my live. So join me tomorrow night, 6 p.m. East, um, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9, um, what is that, 9 p.m. Eastern for my live. And we'll talk about the Schumann Resonance, We'll talk about astrology and we'll talk about the human energy field and how you can manage in these energies. Um, I'm not going to do a meditation tomorrow because I need to fix my space. The meditations aren't coming out with the instruments. I've been having trouble because of how I'm recording. And so I've got a small space and I really, I want those to come out better. So I need to think about how I want that to go. Unless you guys really, really want a meditation, but let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, so, so what happened last week? I don't know if you noticed this, but there were blowups of all kinds in relationships. And if you had relationships where you had smooth sailing last week, that was really, really like, that's really something. Because wherever there was a dissonance in relationships, er, that just really showed. And, people, you know, there was arguments. I mean, I had someone hang up on me and then we didn't talk for days. <laughs> we talked today. Um, <laughs> and, you know, how these things resolve is really interesting, you know, because it, 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 the situation that we had last week and the energies that were reflected on the Schumann, you see that longing towards some kind of ancient past, right? That's really the, the key about that is it's unattainable. It's, it's no longer, it doesn't exist anymore. All right. And, you know, <laughs> 
I have experienced the longing for the past like this as well, okay? Because I remember past lifetimes. And in particular, when I've done healing from past lifetimes, sometimes there's a part of you that just wishes you could, you know, be there again or that wishes that was here. And it's just not possible. And so there's a there's an aspect of letting go, you know, that has to come with considering the past. And there's something about the past and our longings for the past that affected our relationships in a big way last week. And this week it's going to affect us again because of the eclipse and the full moon on Friday morning Pacific time. I think it's around 1030-ish um, in the morning, Friday and Pacific time. Actually, I can just check that really quick. That is... I like to be accurate in my 1034 a.m. Pacific, so 11, 12, 1, 34 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so, so here's the thing, okay? How do we deal with relationships that have been rocky? And here's what I would say to you, and that is that when you come from love, this is where the healing bomb is to let the other person know that you are coming from a loving place for them. So whether you were misunderstood, whether you were projected onto, whether you projected, you know, onto someone else, whatever was going on. And like I said, <laughs> I was dealing with someone close who didn't want to get off there focused on a past way of being, but yet was asking me about the future. <laughs> and, um, you know, what happened was we just texted and I just said, look, I'm coming from love. This is where you, what you asked me. And then we texted some more. And then finally today we talked and it was great. Okay. It's not that it was easy because, I think that everybody's dealing with difficult situations right now. There are a lot of stresses, especially going up to this eclipse energy. Now, if you're in a relationship where it's so rocky that it's tenuous, you know, wherever that might be in life, it might be a good idea to just lay low until the eclipse passes, okay? Because the energies are going to peak um, in the near term, they're going to peak on um, Friday morning and afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, so if there's a relationship where, and where are things tenuous? Things are tenuous where someone won't let go of something from the past, usually in, in these energies from what I've read on the Schumann, um, where someone's projecting onto you or someone is tied up in an emotional state and you can't break through, you know, these are the situations where someone's very committed to that, that you might need to just let it go for a couple few days here. And the eclipse energies are, um, they last for a while. Um, but I'm expecting that there's going to be a crest here on Friday, at least personally. The focus is going to shift a little bit, I think, once we get to the end of the week. There's there's a lot of aggravation. You know, we don't normally see the red that we saw on the Schumann in the low hertz. We don't normally see that. In fact, it reminded me of a chart from August of 2019. <laughs> How do I remember these things? Because I remember the images. I'm a very visual person. And gosh, that one was really intense. That was really intense. But um, but at that time, I said that it was a representation of an archonic energy manifesting um, in our reality. Now, now I think we're beyond that. Um, I think that where we've moved to is that 
um, where have we moved to? Oh, I'm not talking about about when I'm talking about these relationship issues. I'm not talking about people where they've allowed entities um, to manifest in their fields. I'm not talking about being able to resolve those because I think that that kind of situation in these energies is very difficult to resolve. And it's really the other person, you know, whoever the person is that has that situation that has to do the personal work. And not everybody's up for doing the personal work in this lifetime. And that can be hard to accept, you know. Now, so when I said I think we're past that now, what I mean is that with so many people waking up, right, with so many people having all these insights, and, you know, I've, I've been on the awakening path for years, and I've been having actually some really amazing and positive insights, as well as the challenges <laughs> in relationship. Um, but... I think that this red has signified that we're in general, people are dealing with difficult situations. We may not like what we're seeing, but the energies are such that we have the capability to deal with this now, you know, before, um, gosh, what was it? I guess it was, was it three or four years ago, 2019, 19, 2021, 22, 20, has it been that long? 19, 20, 21, 22, four years, what? Oh my gosh, the last three years have felt like, haven't they felt like 30 years and like five minutes all at the same time? Um, but um, so many people have shifted that this arconic energy, that, that the demonic, it does not have a hold on people the way it used to. It doesn't have people admired in its delusions and lies the way it used to. So many people have gotten freed up from that. And I think that that's a big part of the blessing here, that the rub here. You know, the the aggravation, the frustration, what we don't like, it's giving us the will to change. And tomorrow night when I talk about the um, astrology, I'll go into detail with you about what that looks like at the eclipse and full moon. Really quickly, I just wanted to tell you what that um what that was last week, what that special group of aspects in astrology was. On Friday, Pluto, Anteros, Sedna, and Pallas Athena were all sextile from each other in a row, okay? So what that means is Pluto was two signs from Anteros in Aries. That's longing for love, lost love. Um, the desire for love that's unfulfilled. And I think that this is a big reason why there were little tears in relationships, because people were projecting from where they want love, like, I want you to give me this love exactly how I'm asking for it. And another person might say, well, I just can't do that. That's not me. You know, that's your you know, that's your illusion. Maybe it's your dream, but I can't fulfill it for you. I can be here with you, listen to you, talk to you about it and be supportive. But you have to create that for yourself. And that's the thing about the fact that these are all sextiles for each, from each other. A sextile energy, you have to work. You have to do the work. You have to reach for it, as my teacher Andrea says. And Antiros was sextile Sedna, the wounded child. Okay, so that brought out our woundings from the inner child in relationship. And then that was sextile Pallas Athena, who was opposite and opposing Pluto. <laughs> it's like the bottom, um, the bottom part of a um, hexagon. 
is what this looked like. And Athena is the warrior and she, and she's a spiritual warrior. So even though Pluto makes this tough, right? Because Pluto is going to get to the heart of the matter, whether you like it or not. And the heart of the matter might be, this isn't working. You know, I love you, but it's not working. The heart of the matter might be, I cannot join you in victimhood, you know, which is, which is what I had to say. And that didn't go very well, but this week, you know, coming from love and just continually saying I'm coming from love and, you know, this is where my head is at. This is why I said this, you know, this is how I'm trying to support you. Um, and these are what my boundaries are. Okay. I'm not going to go down into the victimhood with you. you know, that's just not, I mean, I'm just not going to do that. Because you are a living child of the creator. You are a child of the most high and you're better than that now. You know, you can lift yourself up out of that now. And that's where I can support you. You know, these are hard conversations to have and not everybody is willing to have them, but we're in a place where the restrictions on growth have broken up. And that's what these stressors have done. They've loosened us up to where we're willing to look at something a new way, where we're willing to listen and where we're willing to let the love in, even if it's not exactly how we wanted it. 